Well, hey there, everybody in Facebook land and YouTube land. Everybody you know, tuning in live or if you're tuning in on uh, the, the taped broadcast, welcome and thanks for coming. I appreciate you giving me the time uh, that you um, could spend, you know, doing any number of things <laughs> to come and hang out with me. So, hey, Sam Thomas, uh, it's nice to see you again. <laughs> put you in the stream here um there we go i am eating some ice cream there's a, a video on youtube of me eating ice cream it's kind of a don't miss one <laughs> mm. this is good um i also make the best edibles on the planet and um and, and that's my you know uh, my claim to fame i'll stick to it and so mm, these are good. Edible brownies. Mmm. Yummy. Mmm. -hmm. So. Mm, pardon me. They're so good you can't resist. All right. Got my glasses on, but I can't read the comments with my glasses on. <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to talk about Gemini. The twins. And boy, are they exciting people. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. Gemini's are like um, the life of the party. <laughs> yeah, it has been a long time, Sam. Where you been? <laughs> I've been just hanging around and, and, uh, and Anthony, I'm doing good. We'll get your comment up there. There we go. I'm doing great, you guys. And uh, two fish swimming in a circle. Oh, you're Pisces. I did Pisces. I'm sorry I wasn't terribly generous, but, but uh, I did have a, kind of a bad experience with a couple of Pisces. But it's okay, you know. It, it, not everybody's the same. And I want to stress that, too. Just because I read something about, you know, how you're supposed to be or whatever from your sign, that doesn't mean that that's the way you're going to be or that you want to be that way or <laughs> that you have to be that way. It's just like observations of common characteristics of any particular sign. Um, it's just a kind of a generalization, really. But I think it holds true when we're talking about like um, <laughs> when, when we're talking about um, compatibility and stuff. It really is kind of, uh, you know, different signs kind of tend to get along better, you know. And uh, I have a Gemini, <laughs> so um, he's loads of fun, and he is um, very uh, energetic and stuff, and and that's that's great, and that's fun, and and I really enjoy um, the Gemini, and I I've actually I had surrounded myself with several of them, and um, they're a fun group. <clears throat> My grandmother was a Gemini. She was a uh, May twenty first, so she was yesterday. I think she would have been. 97 years old. So shout out Grandma Swanson. <laughs> uh, shout out to my Grandma Swanson. She would have been like 97 years old, I think, um, yesterday. So yeah, she was a Gemini and my grandpa was a Leo. So they were quite a couple and um, really just the greatest people ever. And uh, my my sub, uh, Sparky, he, he was a, a Gemini and, um, uh, he, uh, here we go. Uh, Gemini, you know, is signified as the twins and it's, that's the constellation, you, you know, that it's in. And so, um, I gotta have my reading light. Ha ha ha. Grandma Swanson. Yeah. <laughs> she was awesome. She was a little tiny woman, four foot 10 and a half. Don't forget the half. <laughs> so uh, they're the most versatile sign of the Zodiac, intelligent, adaptable, and effervescent, cleverest, and most easily bored. <laughs> the kid in town. So yeah, that's kind of how they are. They they are easily bored and they will move on and be right on to the next thing. You know, they were the kid that you always had trouble entertaining uh, when, you know, you had to babysit them. You, you had to like have 50 thousand things to do you know <laughs> so anyways um 
Whether it's astrophysics or pottery, you have an unrelenting thirst for knowledge and new experience. Uh, the butterfly mentality means you can sometimes struggle with the earthier qualities of stability, commitment, and deter determination. Uh, you live in your mind and you forget to return messages, turn up late for appointments, and sometimes stop halfway through sentences, chasing your own train of thought. So uh, you just uh, uh, have to, I think as a Gemini, you have to consider, you know, being places on time and uh, maybe, you know, making lists and writing things down. <laughs> so uh, maybe you were sidetracked by a phone conversation or suddenly had to understand how mathematical equations work. Surely that's more important than being on time for your sister's wedding. <laughs> so they're um, kind of sometimes uh, detach themselves from others. And um, it's not that they don't have feelings. Uh, it's just that they trust more in logical and in, in intellectual pursuits. Strong emotion can feel disconcerting. And uh, to lessen its pull, you may appear sunny and bubbly on the outside, even if b beneath the surface you're in a black place. So they are really, um, you know, kind of try to be like the happy-go-lucky person, you know. Um, you talk about how angry and jealous or brokenhearted you are feeling, but being willing to investigate the source of the pain feels a little alien. To block out any unpleasant emotions, you'll become even more di uh, distracted, busy, and fragmented. None of this means you're not kind or compassionate. The opposite is true. Um, they are very kind and compassionate people. They uh, connect with someone on a mental level. And when that happens, uh, it's really great. You're skilled at understanding how other people's minds work. And you're fascinated by what makes them tick and want to comprehend their reasons for, um, you know, their actions. So, so it's kind of frustrating when there's no understanding <laughs> people sometimes. Um, but yes, uh, if the disconnect between your emotional and mental nature, uh, skill for impersonation that reflects the dual nature associated with your zodiac symbol, uh, you flip between funny, light, and social to dark, indifferent, and unfathomable. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. And it's not, it's not always bad when they get dark like that. I just go find something else to do for a while because when I come back, he'll probably be all chipper and stuff again. <laughs> Let's not forget father and mother side that you are born from. Yes, um, that's uh, that sometimes influences your growing up for sure. You know, like if you were uh, born to, uh, say, for example, a Gemini, you would know uh, how to have fun. You know, you'd be like, um, the, you'd have that outgoing sort of influence, you know, but then the dark days, you know, you just know where to just to stay away. <laughs> and, you know, it, it does influence your um how you parent, how you view the world, um, you know, how you um, deal with others is, uh, it's, it's important. And you, a lot of times your Zodiac can tell you right spot on how, how those things go. Um, let's see. You probably learned the hard way to keep your mouth closed. Information and entertainment are your currency and it's hard to resist not passing on some juicy gossip, even if, uh, if that's someone you shouldn't. So it's, uh, you know, I think it's a learned thing um, that you just shouldn't pass on gossip. Um, half the time it's not even true. And the other half of the time it's cruel. So I think gossip's never really that good. Um, when boredom takes hold, your curiosity can bring out the dark twin who can be provocative and manipulate facts for your own enjoyment. What you see as harmless banter might actually be unkind, wildly exaggerated, or even blatantly untrue. The fickle behavior you earn uh, can earn you a reputation as being superficial. On the other hand, a focused Gemini is a genius at work. When you're mentally engaged, you'll get through your work twice as fast as everyone else, and the result will be intelligent, thoughtful, and entertaining. So just uh, avoid boredom at all costs if you're a Gemini. <laughs> So in love and relationships, you're the friendliest sign and you fall a little bit in love with anyone and everyone when you first get to know them. You're drawn to new people and situations in a way no other zodiac sign is. Uh, where others are shy or even a little fearful of others, your boundaries are quite fluid. Um, I think Libras are pretty outgoing too. So, oh, flashing light. Yeah. Well, there's candles. I have candles going and, uh, the light is flashing on my um, on my my uh, microphone. I don't know why. 
Oh, I guess it's working. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have, there's some flashing lights about, yes, there is. <laughs> oh, it's the candles, I bet. The candle glow, you can see. See it well here, I'll show you what I got here. Um, I make these, um, this has a this has three wicks in it, but uh, I make these and uh, it's got the little saucer that goes underneath it too. And um, they're, uh, they're fun. And then uh, I also made a pillar candle. I made a pillar candle. So uh, I, I like to make beeswax candles. And then that's what I burn around the house. So, yes. Um, uh, how much does time you are born play? At? Oh, it does. It, it uh, plays into it quite a lot. Um, you know, you can do a birth chart. And uh, it'll tell you the planetary alignment. And it really, uh, I think, reflects a, a lot about who we are. Uh, I have a friend. Uh, oh, I have a friend messing with things on my right. Okay. <laughs> that, is it fake Bob again? Fake Bob is always screwing around with me. You know, he really just doesn't. He's just not real, you know. He doesn't care if my podcast goes all right. He's just kind of uncaring like that. So you see how stiff he is. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, the uh, let's see. They have restless curiosity. And in relationships, um, uh, let's see. They might prefer even separate houses. <laughs> um Let's see. You've you're willing to consider love relationships with people much older, younger than you, and long distance can work too. Um, then, as, as long as you're open minded and uh, willing to try something different, uh, Gemini aphrodisiacs, <laughs> open mindedness and willing to try something different are Gemini aphrodisiacs. So, if you're with a Gemini, or if you want to be with one, be open to, you know, going zip lining, even if you've never gone or, you know, something like that. Cause they're real active too. Uh, really uh, like outdoor active kind of people usually, um, cause they get bored easily. <laughs> Let's see for you to fall hard for someone. There has to be something enduringly fascinating about your chosen person. Uh, bright intellect and enthusiasm for life will keep you coming back for more. Uh, sharing common interests will help you work towards a shared goal. A nimble dance partner with whom a master complicated steps will literally keep you on your toes. And any two person sport such as tennis, squash, or snooker, snooker huh, will give you both an active focus. Games uh, such as backgammon, trivial pursuit, and chess keep you challenging each other's mental skills. And uh, maybe doing a crossword together is uh, something that you could enjoy. Compatible sense of humor is also essential. You'll feel oddly flat or bored with a lover who takes you too seriously. If your own stories, puns, and witty remarks fall short, you might wonder what the point of the relationship is at all. Some light sarcasm and teasing will tickle your mind and keep the atmosphere light and airy, just how you like it. Uh, above all, value open communication. You love talking. It's your superpower. You need to feel your uh, part partner is on the same level and only truly content when there is constant rapport. Well, who doesn't like constant rapport? Um, so many ways that question could be. Oh, uh, okay. And so, yes, who doesn't like constant rapport? You know, uh, I, I, I like to get along all the time, you know. Hey, how you doing, Anna? Nice to see you again. Um, loved your little interview, um, that you had posted. That was great. And, uh, I like your outfit that you were wearing. <laughs> you always look so great. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see, uh, the least compatible, uh, oh, most compatible love signs would be Aquarius, Pisces, or Leo. And the least compatible would be Scorpio, another Gemini, or a Taurus. And it's funny because, um, when we looked at my most compatible, it's a Gemini, but Libra is not listed anywhere here for Gemini. So it's like, hmm, I wonder about that. So anyway, um, no, but I think that uh, I'm fairly compatible with uh, Gemini because um, I'm also like that. I'm kind of um, like to learn new things and go places and, you know, have some excitement and I get bored easily and, you know, all that stuff. So then, um, uh, as an air sign. Oh, that's right. Geminis are an air sign, which is great because um, air signs can kind of um, flow throughout, you know, let's just say we get along great with lots of other people 
and we um oh june 20th okay so are does that make you a gemini as well i got i don't have the dates let's let's check that out oh yeah because it's the 21st may 20 oh may 22nd to the 21st of june so it's i think i thought it was the 21st of may so because i was sure that was my gram but gram maybe grandma was a taurus so anyway there you go <laughs> um because her birthday was the 21st so it's the 21st of june is the cutoff so okay lauren excellent you're a gemini that's nice and uh um ha has this any of this like hit home for you like you know you're easily bored and um but you know you're kind of uh, you know off doing something all the time and last day of spring ah uh, the last day of spring then we'll be on the first day of summer uh one of the friendliest uh signs in the zodiac uh, i'm sure i know you're a friendly person <laughs> um and then your verbal dexterity and dazzling pattern will make you a gifted salesperson uh, convincing people that they need the things they're not even interested in. Your knack for understanding how other people tick is well suited to working in advertising, television, public relations, and all other communications industries. Uh, you're not interested in traditional ways of doing things, <laughs> which sometimes is, um, you know, perplexing for those around you. <laughs> a happy employee, as long as you're always engaged, you'll likely to be the chattiest person in the workplace. Don't set that person by the copy machine. <laughs> hey, making some copies, I see. <laughs> All right. If you become bored at work, you'll be easily distracted and prone to mischief. That's that's the thing. When they get distracted and or when they're um, bored, then they get distracted from their purpose and they start to get in trouble. <laughs> um most compatible colleagues would be Aries, Aquarius, and Cancer. Least would be Capricorn, Gemini, or Libra. And it says Libra likes to weigh things up carefully before making important decisions. Well, you just want to give it a go and see what happens. <laughs> Ideal careers are advertising, a writer, um, I think something with public speaking, a teacher, translator, gymnast, computer programmer, engineer, DJ, juggler or librarian so yeah um those are all that I, I would like to be a um an uh a, what is it <laughs> not a dj i would like to be a dj i think that would be fun um i was thinking about i have a twitch account i was thinking about you know going in there and and like making a playlist and just uh you know djing for a little bit <laughs> less than a week and already had 12 amazing review customer reviews oh that's great lauren that's awesome i'm sure uh, i'm sure you're, you're very helpful to them when they come in yeah less than a year oh less than a year okay not less than a week <laughs> less than a year that's great though still awesome as the first air sign you need to move about airs never still and you crave plenty of variety to keep your feel uh keep feeling active positive and content an unusually speedy walker, you often get to your destinations faster. Long hikes and planned tours aren't really your cup of tea as you get a little impatient once you have got the gist of things or can see the end point at the distance. By then, you're usually ready to take on the next challenge. So and, unless you have some earth sign placements in your birth chart, eating the same food at the same time is not your bag. You'll tend to be more of a picker than a heavy meal sort of person. In fact, you'll find large plates of food quite off-putting. New uh, restaurants, cafes, and market stalls are often just as interesting uh, as the fair they offer. And that's so cool. I love going to these little mom and pop kind of places, you know, uh, like a little off the beaten path. <laughs> Some place like where the locals go, you know, that's where, that's where I would like to be pointed that direction. Um, you're a two starter type of diner rather than plumping for a large main course with a taste for the unusual it's exotic flavors and new products that intrigue you if someone offered you a peanut butter and artichoke sandwich you wouldn't say no you might not eat the whole thing but you'd certainly give it a go caffeine can send a restless Gemini into overdrive so best to avoid caffeine coffee that sort of thing <laughs> nimble and fast on your feet you burn more calories than the average person before you set foot in the gym or added any extra activity and i can say that's for sure um boy uh <laughs> sam is just uh um he is 
I, I don't know what his um, BMI is, but I'm sure it's pretty low. <laughs> He's uh, got like zero body fat. And, uh, and so then, you know, sometimes leave and take food to bed. And I understand that because he like burns calories so quickly, you know, that uh, he almost needs that little, you know, snack in the night just to keep going till morning. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of fun. Um, hi, Bridget. How's it going? And uh, uh, thanks for joining us. We were just talking about Gemini's. Um, did did you guys have any questions about Gemini's or uh, anything you'd like to add maybe as a Gemini? Or uh, um, do you know any Gemini's that you think are just fabo people? <laughs> I know a few. Um, Sparky was a Gemini and uh, his birthday will be June 2nd. And so uh, I, I probably have a little little celebration of life uh for my friend and um you know just uh and just revel in the fact that i knew him because he was a great guy and then uh of course um my sam is a gemini and uh just a, a very sweet person uh who is um always like trying to help people or uh you know do something that um uh, is you know nice or thoughtful uh he's just a great guy and um and very nimble oh my goodness he's so graceful sometimes i really like to watch him skateboard and stuff like that very graceful and he's really picking up on his golf swing very very well so anyway i was hoping to find a match because one of my little uh things went out here let's use the stick off of this uh let, let's light this bottle rocket and see if that helps me. <laughs> no, I'll just break the stick off because that's, you know, I don't really want to light the bottle rocket. Not in here, but uh, maybe later outside. And I do have these wishing uh, lanterns that I would like to get off, you know. Um, they're the paper kind, you know. You, uh... Ah, you put them, um, you, there's like a little fuel cell thing that you light on fire right there. And then, um, you know, you open it up and, and then it, it'll fly away and it'll, it'll kind of start on fire at some point and burn as it goes. But living right on the river, you know, we kind of let them go that way. And then I know it's not going to like land on someone's house or something like that. So we're doing it in a very safe way because, yeah, you got to, um, let's see mom was supposed to be a Gemini. Uh, my grandmother was due to have her on June 20. She was born a month early on May 20. Funny thing, I was born on the day she was supposed to be born. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Isn't that funny how things work out like that sometimes? Makes you wonder, you know, was it an accident or was it just, you know, uh, coincidence. I used to believe in coincidence, you know, like, Oh, what a coincidence. How about that? You know, but then it's like the more you start to, you know, look back on things and analyze things. And it's like, how could that have just been a coincidence? And once you have so many in your life build up, you ask yourself, golly, you know, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, this can't all be coincidence, you know, and it makes you think that there definitely is a higher power. There's some kind of plan for you. And that um, if you stick with the plan, if you uh, do the things that you should be doing, you know, as I don't know, by laid out by the creator, um, I think that you lead a happier life. And I think that you're more content with life because um, you're getting the things that you want out of life. And when you're not uh, living a life that's true to you and true to yourself and true to the, you know, creator's plan for you, I think things go hard. You know, I think it's hard to get things started and hard to do everything and there's no passion in it. Um, and I think that's, that's how, you know, we kind of get burned out and bored with stuff. So, you know, just pray on things and, uh, and ask for guidance and look for signs because it might not be anything more than just um, particular color of feather that you found or um, a particular, you know, thing that you saw or heard and it might just be a very subtle message um i think they're all around us all the time and uh and we have to learn to pick up on those so yeah because uh you know if we don't 
pick up on them, then we're destined to make the same God dang mistakes again and again and get blocked and never meet our goal. Mm. That is some yummy stuff. I had brownie with vanilla ice cream, a little chocolate sauce. Mm. Not just a brownie. An edible brownie. If you know what I mean. Wink, wink. <laughs> yep, and I do make the best edibles on the planet. Well, what was that all about? Let's find out. It was. Mm. <laughs> I love that. When people say, what up? <laughs> We used to say, chicken butts. Because, <laughs> you know, when chickens eat, their butt goes up in the air and they're pecking on the ground. So chicken butts were always up. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's funny. What are you doing, podcast? <laughs> this has been an extraordinary week. And um, I am going to... My takeaway from the week is... Let go, <laughs> let go, let go, let go of the things that, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I think he, he might like the edible kind too. Um, very, they're very relaxing and just, you know, make you feel like everything's good in the world. And, you know, somebody asked me one time, well, how would I know if I was high? And I said, well, do you feel like everything is really good with the world? Everything's going well. Uh, do you do you feel very relaxed and and uh, not uh, you know not worried about anything? And also, you, you know, do you have cotton mouth <laughs> or the munchies? Because edibles make you want to eat more, but it's just a symptom. And uh, uh, but you just feel very relaxed, and and um, it helps me uh, with my fibromyalgia and stuff. My hands have been absolutely horrible lately. I can't hardly make a fist. And the worst part, I couldn't shift the motorcycle. When you can't shift the motorcycle, you can't drive the dang thing. Uh, I suppose I can shift, um, you know, um, just like get it up to the RPMs and then shift without the clutch. But I don't like to do that. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it was tough yesterday to squeeze the clutch hard enough to, um, you know, change into different gear. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be careful with that. So, um, but yeah, good luck to him. And, uh, and if you're in a legal state, take advantage of that. If you need to have any kind of directions or help, I can help tell you how to make butter. It's not hard. So, uh, Oh, because your husband's job. Yeah, that's that's kind of, yeah. Some, and what, you know, let's talk about that. You could have, a, a, you can go out the night before you have to say go to work, you know, and drink until you are just sloppy drunk and fall down in a puddle. And then the next day you get up and you're hungover as hell, but you still go to work, of course. And then, you know, you're doing all the same stuff, but you just don't feel like you're doing very good. You know, you know, it's pretty tough to get through the day. Now, if that same person would have went out and smoked a hell of a lot of pot, they wouldn't ha have a hangover the next day. They'd feel much better about everything and they would, um, you know, go on to have a great day. Um, you just don't get that hangover. You don't get uh, the adverse effect that you get from alcohol and it comes without the stupid decisions <laughs> so i don't know uh not too many people have gotten so you know whacked on weed that they um that they feel like they weren't making good choices you know i know when i uh, used to drink and i would get really smashed i would make bad decisions <laughs> you know and um so i think all in all, I, our government, our, our lawmakers are screwed up um, because, you know, it, if you don't, if you're not getting that, you know, a drug test at work for alcohol or nicotine or any of these other drugs that you're, you know, may, may be taking, it's not, uh, it's not right. You know, 
not legal in Kentucky. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, but the thing is, it needs to just be decriminalized in, um, in the national forum, uh, for them to, uh, hold the states to their standard or whatever, uh, if I was drunk and felt down, I would need a medical alert button. Help, I'm falling and can't get up. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, I've done that before. Been so drunk that you fall down and you can't get up. And uh, it's it's no good. And you, and you never feel good the next day. Oh, no. it's I've lost connection to my camera. All right, let's try, do, let's try clicking that again. There we go. Well, perhaps I'll come back. Maybe I'll just have a, oh, okay, I'm back. <laughs> I was just going to have a spoonful of ice cream here while I was uh, in the interim, but I'll, uh, I'm going to take a chance to do it now here. Mm. If you haven't seen the ice cream video on YouTube yet, <laughs> go check it out. This is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, and um, that was some good ice cream too, let me tell you. Um, I got Blue Bunny, uh, this time on, I actually went to the place where they make Blue Bunny. It's, uh, in Lamar's, Iowa. So I don't know if you guys get Blue Bunny in your area, um, or not, but yes, uh, Blue Bunny ice cream made in Lamar's, Iowa. So mother nature's way of saying hi. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and I heard that it was, um, in, um, living the dream. I heard it was, uh, going legal for recreational in Minnesota as well. And that's great. I think it should, it should be, it shouldn't be illegal for anyone to have. I mean, it's, you know, within reason. Um, I think for, for kids like high schoolers and stuff, uh, I think it, it's best for them to hold off on any kind of any kind of drug usage um, because it affects the way their brain develops. And, um, you know, you want to give yourself the best chance for full development, full normal development that you can. I mean, this there's so many pollutants in our environment already that, you know, you just uh, you got to be careful and uh kids especially they can they absorb that stuff and it's no good um so stay healthy <laughs> and um you know just uh don't um don't worry about marijuana it's okay it's um it's actually something i think that you know the good lord gave us to keep ourselves healthy it's one of those medicinal things you know I really believe that and I also believe that the reasons it's illegal had nothing to do with public health at all it was all about wealth building for a few so <laughs> happened to the last person that lived the dream <laughs> I am trying to live the dream it's not easy. Mm. So yummy. Yeah, it's not easy to live the dream. Um, be careful what you dream. Because um, sometimes I think um, it's not... They, We've been programmed to know or to think a certain thing as the, being the American dream, you know. Yeah, it's a plant for Christ's sakes. I know, right? And uh, why can't we have access to something that, you know, God gave us? It's nature's gift to us. And to say that it's some kind of criminal thing or that it's um, it's evil is just not right. I mean, come on. It's just a plant. And it was designed, they designed this campaign to villainize it so they could sell more, um, new, well, it's, more trees, basically. Um, Rockefeller owned, was it Rockefeller? No, the other guy, the um, Hearst. William Randolph Hearst owned a lot of tree uh, trees. He owned forests. 
And because he was a newspaper man, he supplied the paper for his newspaper and he didn't want hemp coming into play as a cheaper source for paper. So he, uh, cre they created this um, campaign of that, you know, marijuana madness or whatever it was, you know, and uh, to make people think that it was evil and that it was a, a drug that would make you go crazy and all that stuff. And frankly, it's quite the opposite. <laughs> I go crazy if I don't have a little here and there, <laughs> you know, like I, I just want to, you know, stab somebody in the eye with a fork, but I'm not gonna. I'm going to go have some marijuana and I'm going to feel better because <laughs> that's what happens really. And, um, you know, I've, I know I've heard things about, um, 60 spouses and broken list a lot of podcasts. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. I feel, I feel for you, Joanne. Um, I'm 60, well, not 60, 57, uh, spouseless and broke as well. So hang in there, sister. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Bridget, managing while mentally screaming choice words throughout the day. Yeah, I know, right? I'm not mentally screaming them. <laughs> I'm screaming them for real. <laughs> like, motherfucker. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I'm constantly uh, berating uh, uh, inanimate objects. Um, oh, are you kidding me? Oh my God, this is not, uh, the malware is, a, it's installing updates now. I'd like to kill that. The water level is great. It's all down. There is no more flooding, which is a relief. So, um, it's, it's just relief. And, and so now I'm back on the move again. So, <laughs> screamed him out loud too. I know. And then, you know, you think, oh, oh God, I hope the neighbors didn't hear that. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're back to normal again. And, uh, and I'm on the move. So uh, about 10 days, which seems like it's not very much. And, you know, for some, I've spent 10 years here. So, um, but it's time to just, I got to get out of here. It's um, not, I think it's not good for my psyche to be so far removed from everything. And uh, I want to get out there and see what you guys are doing, you know, maybe do some paranormal investigating or uh, just something that, you know, it sounds exciting to me. Um, yeah, why was, yeah, we shouldn't have to put a price on something that grows naturally. We should be able to, you know, just have a plant or two for ourselves and take care of that, you know. I wish uh, that we could do that, you know, because um, I wouldn't bother with anyone ever again. <laughs> I'd just grow some and be happy and uh, that's it, you know, um, maybe trade with others so I could try a little something different now and then. <laughs> but, you know, it's just uh, it's nature's way of helping us. Um, yeah, uh, Bridget, kind of, yeah. Uh, hope you're doing better. <laughs> anyway, um, would anybody care for a reading? I haven't done any for a little bit now. And um, let's see, I did want to send this, um, this podcast to somebody, but I don't know how to do it from, oh, yes, I do. I got to go here. And then there, and I was going to send this to someone, uh, <laughs> the person who called me and said, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm doing my podcast. Um, let's see. And then, uh, I should be on this, the skeleton key network somewhere or not. <laughs> I would have thought that my, um, show would be on here. I guess if I go home, no, that's not it. <laughs> Alrighty, tidy. Oh, how about if I go in as, oh, here it is right here. Oh, I'm uh, uh, also on uh, the Scientific Paranormal Inspection Research and Investigation Team um, uh, website or, uh, you know, site as well. So I'm going to share that to um, a uh, send it in messenger uh, to um, T-Y-L-E-R right there. And I'm sending that. OK, and then uh, that was it. Oh, we'll send it to them too. What the heck? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, wow. There's uh, just a lot of Tylers in here, huh? <laughs> a lot of people named Tyler. So it's all good. And we'll send that to Mort because, uh, you know, he's, uh, uh, I haven't talked to him. Uh, well, I talked to him earlier today, I guess. And so, uh, you know, I like to keep up with everybody. If I can, uh, I try to keep up with uh, everybody that, you know, is like a regular viewer. So, uh, okay. Oh, okay. On things. Yeah. Uh, might take me a hot minute, but I'll get there. <laughs> well, you, you know, it doesn't matter as long as you just keep running the race. Eventually you will get there. And um, so just, just keep hanging in there. So, and remember, it's not, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. So, cause really, um, I was focused a lot on the destination and I thought, well, when I get, when I graduate, I'll be happy. Um, let's see if I had a wish, what would I wish for? I would wish for something like, I would wish that people would love one another more and be kinder to one another. And I think in a world like that, every problem could seem small, you know, because we were all um, just uh, getting along. You know, we all loved each other. We all cared that, you know, something bad was happening to someone else. And I see you guys are like that because you're, you know, you're talking to Bridget, asking her about stuff, telling her she's got this. She does got this because she's a strong individual. She's a warrior inside. And we all are. And we need to, like, bring out that warrior inside of us. It's time. And it's time that we stand up for ourselves as human beings. And we stand up to the powers that be and say, you're not going to do this to us anymore. I mean, we are taxed to the legal. I mean, just to the brim. I just, we're being crushed under taxes. And the thing that gets me the most, it doesn't matter if you work 50 years to pay off your house. Nope. Let me catch that up. Oh, darn it. It doesn't matter if you work 50 years to pay off your house. You don't own it. The government can come by and take your house away and sell it to someone else for the amount of the taxes. And it's just not right. I mean, really, come on. What makes that right? Uh-oh, I'm having some internet problems, guys. I may have to duck on the readings. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, it's a different view, but I guess I'm okay with it. I think I'm back. <laughs> this, would anyone care for a reading? So, uh, yeah, where did I go? I wondered where I went to. <laughs> where did I go? I went to some La La Land on uh, StreamYard. <laughs> I went to the StreamYard stream. Master power of free will and breath of life. Um, yeah, free will, you know, that's uh, that's a big that's a biggie, you know, and it's the it's the wild card in every situation because people do have free will to choose for themselves what they want to do and what they want to be and where they want to go. And you really can't. Um, you can't control it <laughs> and, and it's okay. And you hope that people by learning and um, growing and if, if they're grown in love and uh, acceptance that they'll make good choices, you know, that are not just self-centered and that uh, appeal to, you know, more than just, I mean, the appeal to the masses. I mean, I think we all have to kind of try to care for one another, you know, in a fashion that that's supportive. And, um, you know, so uh, what's in them for the week for me? Okay, Joanne, let's see. Let's see what we got for Joanne. Let's uh, gonna shuffle it one more time. And then I'm going to cut them like this. And then I'm going to cut them like this. All right. So for Joanne, I have... Oh, Ace of Swords, the tower, which means change. You know, the tower is is a sudden change usually. Um, let's see, Ace of Swords. I put my glasses on. I got to have the cheaters. <laughs> oh, Sam, okay, you're up next then. And then the, um, okay, so the Ace of Swords, whoops, we went by that. Aha. 
<laughs> oh lordy the ace of swords is like an ins inspiration you know um like uh something fresh will be happening uh let's see i still have to have the reading light too because it is not that light in here <laughs> all right so then um it points to bright ideas, mental clarity, and the instant insight needed for swift action may suggest a new or emerging idea requiring immediate action to come to fruition. So yeah, something, you know, you need to act upon quickly. So don't hesitate to invest in a new relationship or opportunity. Fresh new insight and clarity in an existing relationship will lead to taking action in a positive direction. Uh, let's see. You're uh, uncovering new ideas for increasing or expanding your business, clarity and insight on how to improve your money sitch, and finally emerging. This is a time for new beginnings in your career. So, you know, heed the call to deepen your spiritual practice and develop your psychic and intuitive gifts. So this is just your recent past. Your, uh, your right now is the tower and uh, it would suggest that um, sudden changes are uh, beyond your control, causing you to feel momentarily disabled. But the message this card offers is that you must persevere since the aspects of your life that are being torn down are no longer serving you. There's a new way of thinking and being that wants to break through. These new structures will support your growth and expansion. So just think about, you know, growing, giving up some of this old, some of the old things that don't serve you and uh, looking at life with a fresh perspective. So, um, and then the future is eight of wands, eight of wands. Oh, the wands. Okay, here we go. Five, seven, eight, and it's right side up. So uh, let's see. There's an element of spontaneity in the eight of wands that gets you excited for an event that's on the verge of happening. This may involve travel or a new person coming into your life. Events move quickly and everything falls into place without you needing to push for a particular outcome. So that's, uh, I think, the common thing uh, with your reading is that change is coming. It's going to come quickly. You're going to have to make some fast decisions about things but that it's going to come out okay in the end because, uh, you know, you got it going one. <laughs> so uh, there you go. And and you would like something fresh. So that's good. Um, and change is not always bad. Change can be for the better, even if it's hard, even if it's something that maybe right now you're not looking forward to. Uh, if you give it a chance, it could be the best thing that ever happened to you. So it's all good. Just be open to change. And then, uh, Sam, I got you uh, next here. Let me shuffle again just shuffle a bit and uh yeah my hands are terrible today just terrible and uh um i have just been uh trying not to like lift anything or you know do anything like heavy duty uh when folding clothes is a challenge <laughs> yeah it's kind of not a great day <laughs> So, okay, Sam Thomas, Sam, Sam, Sam. All righty. So now I'm going to cut them here and here. And I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like that. All right. So, Sam, this is recent past. This is present and future. So we got the... Um, Nope, don't fall. We have the pentacles. You have the ace of pentacles for your recent past, which would suggest to me that... I always say the... Uh, the was it Price is Right. I always... I don't know why. That theme song just sticks in my head, something terrible. And uh, I always, you know, I'll hum it once in a while. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Okay, <laughs> game show theme songs. That sounds like a fun game, actually. So uh, then let's see. The Ace of Pentacles signifies an opportunity or gift from the universe in the material realm. Oh, wait, it's uh, it's reversed. So uh, we'll say uh, indicates there's an opportunity presenting itself that you're unable to see. Perhaps it's because you're trying too hard to make something work or you're heading in the wrong direction. The universe is asking you to loosen your grip, 
relax your need for control, and open yourself to divine assistance. You may not recognize what is right in front of you since it doesn't look like what you've been imagining. So even if it doesn't look like something that you've imagined, open your heart to it anyway. So click your heels three times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, tap them. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't do that, but I do cut them three times. So then the, um, the next one is the Hierophant, I believe. And that, mm, nope. Oh, the Chariot. Ah, it's the Chariot, which is, uh, talks about swift change as well. Geez, maybe that's the, uh, the theme of today's show is swift change. So let's see. The chariot. Okay, so then the chariot says that uh, it would be uh, an important journey or moving towards the next level of your life goals. The chariot asks you to have a clear intention, focus, and a plan for action. Sheer determination alone isn't enough to propel you towards success. Building a solid foundation and creating structure are both necessary steps before you can make a big decision. If you're not sure what to tackle right now. Listen to your intuition. Always good. Always listen to that. So, and then you're moving fast in a relationship, um, but do you both have the same vision for the future? Create a solid foundation and establish any plans before taking this calculated uh, relationship to the next level. Uh, Now it's time to create a clear, concise business plan while also taking um, intuitively inspired uh, action. So, (laughs) excuse me, that's good. And so, uh, let's see, you're ready to take your spiritual practice to the next level, which means you're gaining momentum in life. Based on your intention of moving forward, you can utilize your spiritual practice to guide you to the next phase of life. So that's good. And then now the, um, I think it is the King of Pentacles is your your future. And uh, let's see here. The pentacles. Okay, here we go. So, and he is right side up. So I would say he can represent a person with financial stability, generosity, and drive. It may be you, or it can also represent the energy of a situation requiring you to take a leadership role, make financial decisions on behalf of others, or take action reaching a goal. It may require you to use your resources for the benefit of others, uh, which I know you often do. So, Um, road signs in your life. The road signs in your life are, um, you know, things like you might see a particular, maybe you see a feather that is a particular color or um, angel numbers. I'm always like, well, what's that mean? You know, if I see like two, 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 something like that, you know. Uh, So, oh, okay. Well, thank you, Joanne. Um, Have a good night and uh, love and light to you as well. So, uh, blessed be. And so then, uh, let's see on the, uh, let's see the card may represent a financially prosperous and generous partner coming into your life or an existing partner reaching a new level of financial maturity and responsibility. King of pentacles evokes a relationship where you can both relax and enjoy security and prosperity. You can celebrate this shared happiness by taking a vacation or splurging on a gift that pampers you both. Um, increased financial success and stability are within your grasp. So um, it can mean you'll be using your resources, such as providing network connections to others or serving as a mentor to someone looking to get in your field. So you're feeling a healthy masculine energy and perhaps through a supportive father figure, your own internal father figure, or the father of your children. You're looking for ways to be more generous with your resources, whether it's funding causes based on your passion or spending more time with people in need. So, oh, good night, Joanne. (laughs) So um, anyway, yeah, that's uh, what I got for you. And it's it sounds good. And uh, and I'm sure that you're always generous with your time. And uh, and I know that you're a a helper uh, of people. Um, pretty much on any given day. So um, there you go. That's my, uh, my little reading for you. And so I'm going to end on that one tonight and uh, hope that everyone uh, enjoyed the show and that, that everyone has a a peaceful and blessed night and find ways to be kind to one another and uh, show your love to your fellow man, because we all need that nowadays. And, um, 
<laughs> thing. You're welcome, Sam, anytime. Um, and so, you know, just try to, you know, find ways, you know, be nice to somebody and uh, it'll make you feel good. It'll make them feel good and it makes the world a better place. So with that, I'll say good night to everyone and blessed be. Join me again Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time for Madam After Dark and uh, put the kids to bed first. So good night, everybody.